Hello, I'm Kjokan, also known as Corvus Cornix, and welcome to Classy Movie Rambles, where I talk about all the movies that I found in my closet while cleaning. This week's movie is Mortal Kombat from last year, 2021, and it's about 1 hour and 45 minutes long. And the movie starts with a family at a place called the Hanso Hanshi Compound, and it's basically a ninja clan. And Hanso, the leader, goes away to get some water, and while he's gone, the camp gets attacked, so his family hides the youngest son under some floorboards, and they get killed by uh, the main bad guy, which uses some kind of ice uh, magic. We will get into that later. And, and Hanzo arrives too late, obviously, and he fights the remaining bad guys, kills them off, and he's forced to fight the main bad guy called uh, Bihan. And he loses the battle after a long, cool, epic choreographed fight. And he's left for dead, and he crawls back to the compound, and hears the, the little boys, you know, screaming. And he dies on his way there, and he busts into flames and disappears. And then it starts to rain, and the thunder, go and the thunder god uh, Raiden appears, and he picks up the kid and leaves. And then there is some uh, text explaining about the plot of Mortal Kombat. And then cutting to Cole, the main guy, he's fighting in a, like a cage match, and... Things are not going too well, so he basically uh, taps out. He's bleeding a lot. Uh, <clears throat> and then cutting to Outworld, to the main bad guy called Shang Tsung. And I always mix Shang Tsung up with Shao Kahn. For some reason, I'm, I'm not good with the, uh, the lore. So if I say the one thing, I probably mean the other. So yeah, uh, the bad guys basically are talking about uh, how they will stop the, the torment from... Uh, you know, taking place this tournament called uh, Mortal Kombat. So if they kill, if Sub Zero or I guess big spoilers, uh, be be hung, kills all the guys from Earth Realm, there will be no tournament. So that's their plan. So then cutting back to Cole, he gets a bracelet from his daughter Emily, and Jax is there to talk to Cole. And Cole, uh, Jax asks Cole about his birthmark. It's like a he thinks it's a tattoo, but it's actually like a birthmark of a dragon. So everyone that has these marks are actually marked to be in the uh, Mortal Kombat tournament, but we don't know that yet. <clears throat> and then we're cutting to uh, Cole and his family out for some food, and it starts to snow, and Sub Zero shows up, and he starts uh, wreaking havoc. And Jax picks him up in a car and drives away, and... Uh, he basically leaves the car with the family and basically tells him uh, to go and seek out Sonya Blade while he himself goes to fight Bihang or Sub-Zero. But things don't go too well and uh, Jax's arm are frozen by his cool, uh, uh, you know, Sub-Zero's ice power and he breaks him off and he's left for dead. So that's one trope that I don't get. Why don't you, you know, kill all the bad guys? Make sure they're dead, otherwise they'll probably come back and bite you in the butt later, but yeah. So, <clears throat> so Cole goes to see Sonya Blade. He leaves his family uh, behind in safety. So he jumps over a fence and he uh, gets brought down by Sonya Blade, which actually explains about. He, he, I think she sees like the the birthmark and she realizes that she is in the that he is in this torment. So she has been looking for these guys for a very long time. Shows people chosen to be in the Mortal Kombat. So at Sonya's place, she has this other bad guy with a mark as well, chained up in a chair called Kano. And uh, while they talk, the power goes out and this uh, outer world enemy called Reptile attacks. And uh, in the commotion, Kano ma managed to escape the change and he they fight Reptile and uh, Kano pulls uh, the Reptile's heart out. And I think he even says like fatality, which is a bit cringe, but yeah. Uh, and then Kano is in on the whole thing if he gets $3 million, but Sonya tricks him because she doesn't have a $3 million. And they take a military plane and they drop down by parachute uh, to a temple. And Kano and Sonya fight and Sonya wins this battle. It's like a point pointless bicker, I guess. And then tra they traverse the, w the ways and they eventually come across... Liu Kang, which uh, is the one of the cooler characters in Mortal Kombat, in my opinion. And he throws a fireball at Kano, and Kano is like, can you teach me how to do that? Which I thought was kind of funny. They, they're they actually there for this specific reason, to learn about their powers. Uh, so they go into this place, and they we found out that uh, Jax is there. We get some uh, plot, plot points as well. 
Uh, and uh, Raiden meets, they meet up with Raiden, this Thunder God, and he is not very pleased with his champions. They're not good. They haven't unlocked their uh, inner power powers, the Arcana. So Liu Kang can obviously throw fireballs, and Raiden can do lightning stuff and whatnot, whatnot. And then cutting, uh, and then all of a sudden Sub Zero arrives, and he starts to fight Liu Kang. Uh, and then this guy with a with a hat, I wrote, wrote in my notes. He's called uh, Kung Lao. He uses like a, a hat with a razor blade on it. It's kind of a cool thing. He has like a signature move that he does. Uh, and even Shang Tsung appears, and Melina, which is this creepy. Uh, lady i guess with like open fangs a really uh, nasty one uh so raiden puts up a barrier so the bad guys can't enter because there's like rules to this mortal combat and you there are rules for everything in this universe and raiden is actually a god so he has some kind of saying in the matter uh, yes uh so later there's like a dinner uh, and they they're they're about to like eat and no one has all unlocked their arcanas yet so uh, Kano is just uh, a really just a bad guy in general he tries to start a fight and he managed to activate his arcana which he basically he shoots lasers from one of his eyes so he's the first one to unlock his new powers and then they try to fight some more and figure out how to unlock their uh, powers and then Raiden tells Cole about his lineage. So he is actually the uh, kid that was left under the floorboards at the beginning of the movie. And he uh, he has lineage from the most powerful uh, assassin ninjas in Japan. J just dropping that right now. So he gets like, yeah, uh, I think it's like a kunai, which is like a, a throwing knife, a, a ninja throwing knife. So... The bad guys start to scheme on what to do, so they send over this guy that knows Kano from the past called uh, Cabal, and he actually, uh, put, you know, Kano is uh, a sleazebag, so he goes on a deal, he gets like a, a ton load of money if he lowers the barrier, which is exactly what he does, and uh, what happens is that, well, all of the guys start to fight each other, and uh, before this happens, uh, Cole is actually, you know, he, he goes home. Raiden sends him home because he doesn't like, he's not in for it. So he goes back home and while he's home, he uh, is forced to fight this four-armed uh, monster hulking thing called Kano. Not Kano, uh, Goro, I'm tired. So he fights Goro and things are not going too well, but then his power activates for some reason. He gets beaten up and he gets some kind of armor. And I'm calling it what it is, it's plot armor, because now he can take more, more of a beating and things, and he manifests some kind of blades or something, and he just cuts Goro up like really brutal. And the other guys, like Jax, he gets his arm kind of broken, and he tries to save Sonya by lifting up a stone, but his uh, mechanical arms are so bad that he break. But then his uh, new powers unlock, his arcana, and he gets uh, uh, better arms. <laughs> so I thought it was just funny, like, well, I don't know. So then Cole is summoned back to, um, to the fighting and they, they're forced to fight the rest of the bad guys. So then what happens is that Kung Lao's soul gets sucked out of his uh, body by Shang Tsung and Raiden pulls all of the good guys out of there and they need to regroup. So then they talk a bit and Raiden sends them out all into a different... Uh, single battle with all the other guys because he's the god of thunder he can teleport people at will so there is Mortal Kombat and Sonya managed to kill Kano and she gets her mark Liu Kang kills Cabal with, with fire Sonya saves Cole from uh, Melina and Sub-Zero uh, goes for Cole's family so Cole is forced to fight Sub-Zero alone and he managed to use the kunai and he summons his father uh, or his spirit which is a really cool scene because his father is Scorpion. So uh, there's this famous line where uh, uh, he shoots out one of his like kunai on like a chain and he pulls uh, Sub-Zero back and he says like, get over here. And it's like the best line in the movie, hands down. And uh, they, they, the son and the, the father help each other out and they fight Sub-Zero and they free Cole's family because uh, the, the, power of fi the power of fire can save you from the ice apparently. So they managed to beat Sub-Zero down 
Scorpion use his signature uh, finishing move uh, when he basically burns Sub Zero into Cinder. So he's like face burns out and like showing the the skull and everything. It's like the uh, the game fatality, which is kind of cool. And then as the battle finishes, Shang Tsung appears and tells him, "This is not over. I will return with an army next time, and you will see." And then Raiden just banish him, like, "Well, you talk too much," which is just like totally a Raiden thing to do. And then the good guys starts to recruit for the next uh, tournament, which is up, the Mortal Kombat, and they're looking for a guy in Hollywood called uh, Johnny Cage. And that's the end of the movie. So what do I think about Mortal Kombat? Uh, it's a good movie. Uh, it's definitely not uh, Mortal Kombat uh, Annihilation, which is one of the worst <laughs> things. Uh, so, uh, how do I explain? Uh, this movie is based on a video game that was kind of cheesy and a little bit cringe to begin with. Uh, you know, with lots of humor and fatalities, brutal and gore. And I think the filmmakers actually did a good job. I don't see why there's so much negative critique to it. I mean, it's just a funny action movie based on a on an old video game. And, you know, they had some really cool uh, fight choreography. Like, uh, you know, they, they use all kinds of weapons and there's a lot of martial arts and uh, wrestling and jiu-jitsu and whatnot. So I think it's a really cool concept. So, I mean, I can definitely recommend this movie. If you just watch it as an action movie with, you know, beers and popcorn you you can't go wrong so anyway thanks for listening and or watching and take care